And, but H5P allows you to interact with the student, okay? And it allows the user, the student himself, to direct their learning process. Okay, so how you do it is by using different kinds of modality in H5P. Okay, so we log in. Zul, you can log in. You can log in your own. You just log in your own. I think you just you don't have H5P. So you try and log in to you create a H5P. I think you can start by creating an H5P account. You can log on and create an H5P. Just go to h5p.org. Okay, and then you'll have H5P. Login. You log in with your UMS uh, user ID, UMS mail, because you can recover it faster. And then H5P recognizes dot, dot .edu dot my as an educational website. I mean, educational ID ID. Okay, so I'll just give you all some time to log in and create your account. Wilson, you have the account also, H5P. You have account? No, no, I don't. Have Please create an account because the account is. The content which you create in H5P is not volatile, it remains in the server for, you can keep it there for a long, long time. Okay, we'll have to pull down some of my videos. Uh, Zul, we, we work with the video one first, video, I think I download, just the video, you use the Kenneth, just 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 Google in YouTube, you just, you just write it, because that's the video which I know. <laughs> YouTube, just write uh, Kenneth UMS, Kenneth UMS and RNA extraction. Write Kenneth UMS, RNA extraction, the video is there. Extraction, RNA extraction, uh, RNA extraction, put extraction, extraction. Uh, I'm just giving you a video example of Okay, not there. You put Kyogen, Q, uh, Q, I, A, R, the next section, Kyogen, Q, I, A, Q, I, A, uh, Kyogen, and it, ah, uh, yeah. Not coming, so, uh, this one is it. Okay, <coughs> I just click here. Don't play the video on this one. This one, just click here, uh, just click. Okay. Okay, just click on the video and we keep it on hold while they all log on. I will tell you why I'm using the video because I know what's the content. So, in order to uh, uh, use the full power of H5P, you need to create your own video because only you will know your content. So, you need to create the video for your student in which you know the content. Then you can use the H5P effectively. Of course, you can use other videos as well, but then you need to analyze the whole video and find out the, the points at which you can do uh, assessment. Okay, so generally when I design the video, I already incorporated the learning outcomes and uh, stops at certain point. For example, I say the first six slides of this video will describe the procedure number one. Okay, at the end of the sixth slide, I will assess the procedure number one. Then the next six slides will... Uh, so you, to create the H5P uh, in really customized format, you need to create the video first by yourself and upload to YouTube. So once you have the video ready, you can do it. Of course, there are certain things like, for example, historical video, which is recording a historical, you can actually record, you can use the video from YouTube and basically uh, address certain points in the video, but you need to study the video completely. Okay, so you'll have an account, okay? Dr. Bhakti, have an account. Alnetra, have an account, okay. Okay, so when you're in the H5P, basically all your data, everything is stored in this icon here. It's called my account. So in the, whatever you put on H5P, you must remember, it will be distributed uh, it universally. You, will be, you can access that content by other educator can access that content. Okay? And you have the basic function, which is this pink button. The pink button is try out H5P. When you click on that, it will give you different types of functions. Okay, now remember that H5P is being modified all the time. So newer and newer developers add newer and newer kinds of assessment tools. I will show you the example. So you click here, try out H5P, click, and just wait for it for a while. Because H5P is a free platform. It takes time because it's uh, not as fast as Google. It's a free platform, open source developer platform. Okay, you have to select the content type. Okay, so in H5P, right, 
it gives you multiple types of content for interaction. So you can create quizzes, you can create drag and drop, true and false, fill in the blank, mark the word, memory games, then you can make hotspots. It keep, there are many uh, applications for this. But all the whole intention of H5P is interaction with the student. That's the, so once you have the H5P created in this, uh, in this platform, you can plug it, it into your smart MS using embedding system. We will, we will guide you through that. Okay, let's look at this. Uh, the one which is most relevant to us is the video file. Okay, we are going to learn. So I'm going to use a video which I have to create this one. This is the most widely used, which is actually called the interactive video. You can click on interactive video. Okay, so interactive video starts here. Wait for a while, everything is slow with H5P. It's need to go everything plan plan otherwise it will get hang are you using wi-fi as well or the wi-fi okay, okay. Wi -Fi. all of you all can access interactive video or is it still loading loading Okay. Now some of us have video, right? Elnetra, you have some video on physics, right? Yeah, and then I think Wilson has video, right? On, on your somaclonal very on the plant molecular. But you have anything Hafizi or Madirin? You have video on the labor history in Malaysia. Ma and then Hafizi also has some video. Uh, you have, right? Okay. You take the video in which you have points at which you can query the student. You pick up that video. Okay. You click here. Okay. The title maybe today I will use RNA extraction. RNA extraction basic, uh, RNA extraction, okay. okay, go down, okay, so go down and then we scroll down, okay, now the video is actually having an upload of 16 MB, but please do not upload to H5P because when you want to access it, it will be slow. The best way is to upload to YouTube or to the screen customatic and then you click here, you just add video, okay, you add the video, you click here and now we are going to copy the URL from there. Okay. I'm going to copy the URL from there. So share, copy. If you have a, uh, in the screen customatic, you can use that link as well. So screen customatic will host your video. You can go into the video, okay, and then you just click and paste. Okay, so insert. So once you have the video here, it's hosted inside the H5P. Now the video is there. What you need to do is click on this one. So this one gives you copyright. So if you are using video from your own creation, it's okay. But sometimes when you use video from somebody else's content online, like a YouTube video, you need to update all these fields. So this, will, this is giving you a random title. So might just write the title RNA extraction you can just write Kenneth, just Kenneth, just change to Kenneth. And then you can just write 2019, just add all this, just, so the source will be your link to the video. You can just paste, just paste, control V. Uh, so this is the source link. And then you have the copyright is called, uh, so YouTube is attribution only, so attribution, attribution, yeah, okay. And 4.0. Okay, I will explain to you all what is that attribution thing all about. So, the in this one is a personal created video, self-created video. So, my license is basically called attribution, which means the video can be downloaded, reused, remixed and shared. But you have to be careful with some videos from YouTube, they are not attribution. So, you have to check the license of the video from the YouTube site. Okay, with the standard YouTube license, it changes. You, have, you may have to change it too. So, I click on this. So standard YouTube license will be called, you actually have a commercial or copyright, okay? So be careful with YouTube video which are, which are having what is known as a standard YouTube license. Those cannot be downloaded, cannot be uploaded. They can only be embedded, okay? And some videos you cannot even embed because they force the, they prevent you from embedding the video, okay? So for YouTube, we usually use copyright. It's the safest alternative to all this, okay? So don't. So this is basically attribution, attribution, just attribution, okay? Once you're all thing done, you can close. 
So this is why we need to create our own content to prevent conflict with other user, other content creators. Okay, so now you have your video in place. So this is step one, step two, step three. Everything is here. Okay. Step two is you have to add the interaction. How your student will interact with the video is you edit at this stage. Okay. Okay. So now you can scroll. Zul will go through one by one. We have many types of interaction here. Label. Label means you can explain to the student in the video by adding a label on top of the thing. So for example, if I add label, it will come. Text is there. You have text. You have table. You can add a table in the video. You can attach a link. You can attach an, another image. Statement. For example, you are telling a procedure A, B, C. You can add a statement. You can do a single choice set. You can do multiple choice set. And these are all the quizzes. So we do a true false question. Fill in the blank. Drag and drop. Mark the word and so on and so forth. So you have different combination. Usually what we do, we will take the video until certain stage. And then we will ask the student in the above video, what is uh, what do you need to do next? Or what was, can you summarize the earlier process? Okay, so I will uh, let the video play soon. Okay, let the video play. Okay, so in the video, there is actually a descriptive text. It's describing the video. Okay, so Zul can roll it forward. You just roll the thing forward. Okay, okay. Okay, just roll, 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 roll somewhere here. Roll the step forward. Ah, you can roll it there. Okay. Okay. Okay, so close that one you can close. Okay, so I rolled it to this point, and then I asked the student, you can click there, click the true or false, click true or false. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to ask a true or false question. So the question is, RNA extraction. Okay, just give a true or false. Okay, so it displays button, or it can display as a poster. These are all the different kinds of system which you can see online. So it just display as a poster. So it comes as a poster on top of the video. Okay, so the untitled true false question. So you just use the question. So this will be the correct answer. Okay, so the correct answer is the first step in RNA extraction. The first step in RNA extraction involves lysis. Extraction is is lysis. Just put is L Y S I S. S I S. Okay, just put L Y S I S. I just put it because I want to be proper because it will go online. S L Y S I S. Small letter. Small letter. L Y S I S. S I S. Okay, so the next one is just go down, and this will be the false answer. So the false answer will be okay. So the first step, so you can add the false answer. Okay, so you have true, false. Okay. The question will be, what is the, okay, sorry, you just said here, what is the first step in, what is, what is, what is the first step in RNA extraction? Mm -hmm. First step, okay. Yeah, just put, uh, just write uh, lysis, lysis, I, I just write for you, because <laughs> it's difficult for me to tell you. Lysis is the first step. This is the first step in RNA extraction. Ah, okay, okay, now it's okay. So that is the that is the answer. Is the true true answer? So the true answer is here. Okay, then you go down to behavioral setting here. You click here, and then you enable and automatically check answer. Don't click all this because the student it's true or false. Don't check. The student will automatically know the answer. Okay, feedback on wrong uh, answer. Feedback. So, if the feedback is wrong, answer. Please review the video. Please review the first. Please review the video. Okay. And you have the correct answer is well done. You can just put something well done. Well done. Okay. So you have everything. You go down to adaptivity. Okay. Okay. Action on all correct. Okay. Allow user to opt out and continue. So, if the if everything is correct, you can allow the user to finish and go away. If it's action on all wrong. Action all, all wrong. Click on. So you need to allow the user. So you cannot allow. So you allow the user to revert, revert back to the original video. So you can seek to uh, zero, uh, zero, for example, zero, zero dot ten ten zero semicolon ten second ten second. Okay. So that means if the if the student made a wrong answer, he has to go to the ten second of the video to watch the same process again. So you know that because you already preset this this condition. So that will be the 
thing. So you said, please retry the video. You have to write, please retry, please retry, please retry, please retry, retry. Okay, and then you click here, require full score. Okay, so this basically allows you to monitor the student. So the student will watch the video. He will have to be attentive to the process. Once he reaches, he has to assess. If he gives the wrong answer, it will lock and it will tell you to retry. Okay, so you save, you do done. So there's one button for force replay. Don't allow force replay. So there's one, uh, one more. You know, all content. So enable show. Mission automatic feedback on guns. Okay, everything is done, and then you go down. Correct message label for seek. Please try and then okay, done. Done. So this video will actually go and lock. So you can go back, Zul. Go back to the, go back to the little bit before. Okay. So and you play. Now the student will be actually watching this video in which you are describing everything, and then they have reached the point. So if you, they will. Can you see the small lock button here? It should, it should basically stop. There will be the lock button. Let it, let it move by itself, just that time. So you have described that procedure in the first step, okay? So it stops. So stop. So once the content is in the H5P, other lecturers from anywhere in the world can use the same content. So that's why we try and be as accurate as possible because once it's published, it, okay, now it's stopped. The video has stopped. So now the student has to give the right answer. So just click on false, okay, false, and then click on false. You save, so you have to save it, save, save, save it down there. Go down, go down, go down, go down. Uh, save, 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 save the video, sorry, save, save, yeah, save, yeah, save. Okay, so if the video is, okay, capture because I'm not a robot, click, it's asking you because you're in UMS, the network, I'm not a robot, and then you save. Okay, so now we previewed the video, you know it will stop. Okay, so, done. Okay, load. Okay, now you play the video. Play. And then you can move it forward, move the tab forward. Move it until almost there. So the student will see the video and then he will see that. Okay, it reaches here. And now it should stop. Okay. It will stop. It will ask you the question at this point. So if you are the student and you give the false answer, see what happens. False. Click false. And then you go down. Submit. Check. It says no. Please go back to the original one. Okay. You can uh, click on continue. Okay. It will ask you to go back. So now if you give, now the it went back to the, again to the same thing. The student has to look through the same video until they get the correct answer. So now of course he will watch it and he, he cannot force it. Because we are watching it, we can force. But when the student sees it, you can enable, disable the force. So they have to watch that video. Now this is very good when you are doing your SLT, student learning time. So you give them a 30 minute video, you can record it in your document on your student learning time, 30 minutes. So this can be done as a prerequisite to your class. Okay, zoom there, zoom. Zoom to the, go, move forward. Okay, and then you reach there. Of course we can zoom because, we can scroll it because we are creating the content. Now you give the correct answer. Okay, give the correct answer true and then you move forward and then it says check. So it gives you a well done and then you can move forward with the video. Continue, it moves forward into the next section of the video. So you can use this for your lecture content. So especially lecture which are fundamental or like lab content. You want to teach them a particular protocol, you can do it using this method. Okay, it's clear about how we do it. Okay, now the next step is how do you actually incorporate this into your smart to UMS. So the way you do it is by using what is known as embed coding. In, this, in the bottom of the video, you will actually see an embed code. Okay, you have click on embed code and you will get the code. That's the code. Okay. You copy this code and then we go to our demo of the smart to UMS. Smart to UMS, you had opened Logged out? Yeah. Okay. So if you go into the system, right, there are many, many kind of free tools available which are developed by open source developers. So you are 
free to use. Okay, so we go down to demo, demo BL. Okay, again you click on add content. You can add the content again. So you just add an activity or resource. You can. It's called a web page. You add page. Add. Same, same procedure, you just follow the page, enable the HTML, demo video, demo, demo H5P, H5P. Okay, then you click the embed, embed code and then you click, control V, <coughs> update. Okay, display description on first page. Okay, and then your page content, you just put some copy and paste. Okay, save. Save and return to the course. So now the co the video can embed directly into your smart to UMS. Okay. So this is the way in which you use the H5P platform to embed. Now when you have your version 3, we have asked them to give an embed code. So when we embed this inside and we have the plugin running, it will capture the score of the student and it will add it to your grade sheet. Your sheet your grade uh, mark. So, or you do not you don't have to monitor the student anymore whether they watch your video or they did not watch your video, they will automatically add to your grade point. Okay, so that is a function of that plugin. Okay, so then. It will extract that score from there and it will add it to your, add it to the score. The score which you use for the, this, the score sheet, so you can see the score. I think here there is no participant, but usually you will have the score, your report, grades. It will come here, yeah, it will come here grade, to the grades. So if you have 100 students and 100, you cannot monitor 100 week, 100, so they will automatically. So upon completion of this task, because it requires the full mark for completion of the task. So if they complete the task, it will automatically add the mark into the system. Of course, when they have the plugin, we will give training on how to key in the, or basically use that plugin. Okay, that's about that plugin. Okay, so H5P can be used for many applications. I'll give you all a break now because we continue after lunch. So H5P basically has many, many apps inside for evaluation. One of the good ones is the quiz. You even have the quiz with the images, image quiz. You can select image and link it to quiz. You can use it for hotspot, which is the easiest one. And you also have got, for example, synchronization of time. You can synchronize things with respect to time. So all this functionality is available in H5P. All you need to, and then you have this function which is clone content. So if you have content which is already there and you want to modify it for the next batch, you can click clone. You can repeat the same content, just move the questions or change them slightly for the next batch of students. Okay, so you go to my account. So now this content is actually See, see the way the content has been curated. I am the one who created the video, but Zul is the one who created the H5P content. So now, who is attributed? Zul gets the attribution. So that's the way it works in the CC community. So we are doing a, a Creative Commons licensing. So Zul is the one who creates. So he took my content, which is attributable to me, but he created the content. So this content is attribu attributable to him. <laughs> so that's the way the open licensing works. He gets attribution for creating this content. Okay, so he has the content and then you can always, this content is available and other people can access and reuse it. Okay, so Zul, you can try out H5P, you can click. So, if you, are, if you need a tutorial in your respective faculty that day also, I went to FPL, I have to do it very fast. I can cover each and every one of these, but I'll require the full day from morning until evening, from eight to five. I can cover each and every one of these and each is, there, for example, there's a course presentation tool. Can you go absolute to the course presentation? There's a, in, in this only, course presentation. Presentation, uh, course presentation, okay. So these are interactive slides, okay. This one is more like, a, if some of you all are familiar with the, which Articulate Studio, uh, this is something like Articulate Studio. So this is a course content with interactive, you can upload your lecture note here, and then you can ask questions in the slide itself. Rather than make a video, video requires a lot of memory, here you can, so you put the first 10 slide, at the end of the 10 slide you use ask question, then your next 10 slide ask question, so that the student can, so now this one is not basically for your classroom, this is for flipped classroom, 
So you give this content outside the class. Let them do their study at their own pace. When they come back to class, you can follow up with other link content. Okay, so that's about it. So if you need a specific training, that's why I say in your faculty for this, I can conduct it, but I'll require minimum Monday and ideally two days. <laughs> two days of full time. Yeah, then I can show you all everything inside because I studied, actually I studied it one by one. So I can teach you all how to do it. Okay, there's also, there's also a very interesting one which is capturing your speech. And then it captures your speech answer by speech. So if you give the right answer, it will ask you a question, it will recognize your voice. There's a voice recognition in this as well. Okay, so uh, you can use your, so you need to use Chrome because Chrome has the engine for voice. Okay, so we'll